What's up guys, Skitty here? So Warcraft Rumble has just been globally released, and I'm actually very psyched to play this. In this video, I'm going to show you 6 beginner tips so you can get a headshot from your opponents. Now before we get into it, don't forget to sub for free and stay tuned for more awesome gameplay, and slap the button so hard just like a prince used to slap you when you were a naughty kid. First off, we're going to talk about leaders. So, when you start the game, they are going to let you pick your first leader. This is very important, guys. There are four leaders that are extremely good right now, and I would suggest you to pick up either. First off, Tyrion. So, Tyrion is a tank that heals their allies. It is actually kind of a no-brainer. It's great for beginners, and whenever your troops take damage, Tyrion can heal all of them. So, it's actually a really, really good way to, you know, fight the early stages. With Holy Light, everybody gets healed and everyone's happy. The second one that I would recommend is my personal favorite, Rand Blackhand. If you love flying troops, yeah, this hero is going to yield a lot of profit. Because whenever you play other flying troops, then they're going to cost one less gold. Uh, treat gold as uh, Alexa in Clash Royale. Like, you have to pay the cost in order to play your uh, minis or whatever, units. So, whenever you're playing a flying troop, it costs one less. Yeah, imagine you have a lot of stuff that cost like three, and then they cost less. Then you're gonna swarm your opponents really fast. Note that they do not cost less than two. So, it only works with minis that are uh, three cost or more. But this guy, though, is a flying troop. Whenever it gets knocked down, then uh, the dragon flies away and the Rand Blackhand just goes back to the ground and fights enemy units. It's actually a great um, damage leader and also a tank. So it's pretty good early on, especially if you have a ton of flying troops right behind it. The third one that's really good is Perrin Rivendell. This guy is really great because it spawns uh, little skeletons right beside your, say, tombstones, your uh, turrets. That's just even more tankiness for your whole team. Just play that and then play a ton of AoE or, you know, damage dealing troops behind and you will yield a lot of profit. So this guy is melee, is single targeted, and is also a tank. So place it in front and tank for your DPSs. The fourth one, sadly I don't have, but it's the one that's right under the uh, 25 and then the red uh, sigil. It's the Hawker. If you want to play the Hawker, you need a deck that has really low cost, because whenever you play Hawker, it gets stronger and stronger the more you play him. So you want to psycho deck and psycho your Hawker real fast, and then is gonna be unstoppable. Okay, now moving on to the second most important tip. The good units. Okay, first off, this is one of the best units right now, is Safe Pilot. As you can see, when you deploy her, she's going to uh, come down, and you can actually deploy her anywhere. Note that, in this game, uh, you can only deploy most troops near your turrets but with stuff like safe pilot she's an unbound unit which you can see uh the bottom right hand corner you can deploy it anywhere on the map when it deploys it deals aoe damage and then the shots from herself deal aoe damage as well so she's great when your opponents are swarming against you okay second really good unit is the gargoyle it's actually a flying tank, and whenever these kind of uh, siege minions uh, get to the opponent's turrets, it's going to deal double the damage. So, get your Gogo on their turret or on the main boss, then it's going to deal a ton of damage while tanking for your other DPSers. Okay, the third one that's really good is Go. Yeah, this guy is a very cheap tank, it only costs 2 gold, and then when it defeats enemies. It's going to consume them to regain health. Check this out. It kills stuff and then there are some remains where he can eat 
and then regain health and tank for even longer periods of time. So, Go is just crazily good. The third one is really strong as Huntress. It's kind of like um, Luna from uh, Dota 2. So, its attacks will cleave onto enemies just like this. Boom! A ton of swarms are gone. So, yeah, if your opponent is a swarm deck, then you just run your Huntress behind the tank. You're going to clear everyone in a very short period of time. Of course, it hits air units as well. So if they play something like Harpies, you can deal with that very easily also. Then the final one. Hey, I actually got all of them in the same deck. It's Harpies. Uh, treat them as minions if you have played Clash Royale. Yeah, it's actually very much like minions. There are three of them and they hit really fast. Hmm. So look at that poor tank getting completely wrecked. There we go. It's... Cheap, zen, beautiful, and it's a flying unit as well, just like minions from Clash Royale. Flying units cannot target it, and if they just throw down a tank, just place down your harpies and say goodbye to their tank. So these are some really good minis that you can level up early on in the game. Now, let's move on to the third main tip. It's the main stages. Okay, so when you are on the map, and you can see stuff like this. And this is where you fight the main stages and the main bosses. Uh, honestly, this is not a very good way to gain experience. But uh, we're going to get into experience later. What the main um, line of stages usually do is um, to unlock sigils. Yeah, the main use of this is to unlock sigils. There are 160 currently. And whenever you complete these milestones... And you can get three troops. So the first one is obviously the first leader when you get two sigils. And if you have not seen the first part yet, go back there and check out which leaders you should pick. Yeah, the first leader is very important because it's going to accompany you for a long period of time. Until, you know, the 13th sigil. And then uh, 31st, 43rd, 53rd, etc. You will be able to choose uh, three leaders break troops when you unlock your sigil. So, make good use of that. Okay, the fourth beginner tip is going to be quest mode. Remember I said how the main stages are not very good ways to gain experience? Well, quest is. You can do 20 quests per day and sometimes you get the bonus of 3x. Uh, the best one, I believe, is 5x. You can get 5x the experience. So whenever you go into the quest page, you're going to see three options. Okay, you can level these up. These are the cards that you have already gotten into your inventory. So let's check it out. So two of the um, minis are the ones that you already uh, put on your deck. So let me explain it a little bit easier. So uh, in my Baron Riven Dare deck, I have these six minis, right? So if I go to quest, then two of them are going to be in here. So I um, one of them is going to be the lowest level one in your deck. And then the other one is going to be one of the minis in your deck. And then the final card is a random card that you already own. So there we go. Hopefully that is simple enough for you to understand. And uh, if you have cards that are very similar on levels, like the ones I have here, then you can level them back to back. Or if you have unlocked a new card and it's kind of underleveled, then you can uh, focus on upgrading that very easily as well. So I think their design in the quest mode is actually pretty good and very beginner friendly. If, especially if you just want to train up a particular weaker card, then you can do so. And yeah, be reminded that this is the best way for you to get XP for your cards. So definitely go ahead and do your daily quests. And number five is going to be guild. Okay, joining a guild is very important. Uh, if you press the top right hand corner shop here, you can see there are some rewards that you can unlock just by playing the game alongside your guild members. See, there is a Sylvanas Windrunner waiting for us. And um, 
we just gotta reach 10,000 points. Yeah, by playing the game, you just unlock it naturally. So find a guild to join and have some fun with your guildmates. Communicate with them. Yeah, while well, via the messaging. So there we go. Now the sixth and final tip is going to be the shop. Okay. After you earn coins from you know doing uh, the main storyline, then well, you have to spend them somewhere. And what you are going to spend them on is to unlock troops and also heroes. As you can see, you can unlock heroes like Jaina. You can unlock troops like Harvest Golem. But that's actually a little bit of trick when it comes to this shop. Honestly, I would not recommend you spend any gold on these daily offers. Except for the first one, that's, which is free. Yeah, because these things are not exactly worth the buck. So what you should only be spending on is the grid, which is on top. Let me explain the grid really quickly. Whenever you buy one of these things, then the adjacent... Um, so the, you know, the column and the row are going to be uh, refreshed, right? So you can buy Sejana, then this column and this row are going to be gone and refilled. If I buy the middle one, then yeah, the same happens. If I buy the Harvest Golem on top, then the top row and the middle column are going to be replaced. I'm going to demonstrate by um, unlocking... Oh, which one? Which one? Gina is not exactly the best hero, so I'm going to save that for later. I'm going to buy the Harvest Golem right here. go and see those uh, the column and the row are replaced and when you are buying these things note that you should always try to unlock the new stuff that you don't have first as you can see there's a plus one star over here with the uh, earth elemental but that is just going to add one star to it when you have three stars and you unlock one slot where you can have an upgraded ability which you can buy from this shop as well but um, make sure you spend your gold early to unlock every single mini and heroes just because of this. As you can see here in your own profile, your collection level really matters. Whenever you uh, upgrade your collection level, then your bonuses are going to increase. So if you stay at really low levels, then your bonuses are not good enough. So as you can see, let me demonstrate that. If I buy this, uh, spiderlings and it's already gonna be level 7 you don't buy cars at the base level which is level 1 whenever you get good enough collection levels then your cards are going to gain more initial experience so you don't buy them at level 1 you buy them at level 7 right now so if I increase my collection level by a lot then maybe this is gonna be level 10 level 12 level 15 I don't know so you don't have to use up a lot of time to train up your stuff which i think you know they have done pretty well design wise so hopefully this guide has been helpful to you if it has don't forget to sub for free and stay tuned for more awesome warcraft rumble videos and slap the button so hard just like your parents used to slap you when you were a naughty kid and i'll be seeing you next time peace out guys